The ankle brachial index, or ABI, is a means of assessing for peripheral arterial disease. There are two commonly used methods in the office setting. One is the use of Doppler, which is the gold standard at this time, and the second method requires the use of an automated or oscillometric blood pressure device. In this video, we will review the oscillometric ABI measurement technique, but uh, please refer to the link below for our video looking at the Doppler ABI technique. So, why should we assess ABIs? Peripheral arterial disease affects approximately 800,000 Canadians. Over 50% of these patients are asymptomatic, which is important as research demonstrates that patients who are asymptomatic with an abnormal ABI have poorer cardiovascular disease outcomes than patients with normal ABIs. So the most recent meta-analyses that we found show that the sensitivity and specificity of an oscillometric ABI are 69% uh, and 96% respectively. Risk factors for PAD include smoking, diabetes, hypertension, dyslipidemia, advanced age, and family history. ABIs should be used to evaluate lower extremity ischemia in patients presenting with claudication, breast pain, or foot ulcers. It can also be used as part of cardiovascular risk stratification, safety assessment for compression stockings, and evaluation of lower extremity trauma. There are no absolute contraindications for ABI assessment. Nevertheless, it is best to avoid its use in patients with severe leg pain, suspected DVT, or in those with distal bypass graft. Unlike the Doppler technique, you actually only need one piece of equipment for the oscillometric technique, and this is the automated blood pressure machine. Luckily, this comes standard in most office settings. To begin, ensure the patient has not smoked for at least two hours prior to measurement, and that they are in a supine, comfortable position for approximately five minutes with both their head and their heel supported, and that their arm is at the level of the heart. Select an appropriately sized cuff for both the arm and the ankle, ensuring that the width of the bladder is at least 40% of the limb circumference. The procedure follows a counterclockwise direction. So starting at the right arm, then moving to the right leg, left leg, and left arm. Start by applying the cuff to the right arm. Simply turn on the machine and select the start button to begin measuring the blood pressure. Record the systolic pressure as the right arm. Next, move to the right leg. Apply the cuff two centimeters above the medial malleolus and repeat the blood pressure measurement. Record this pressure as right leg. Next, you'll repeat the same blood pressure assessment for the left leg and left arm, recording the systolic pressures from each as you've done in the previous two steps. To calculate the ABI, you will use the highest of the two brachial artery pressures. Then, divide each respective leg pressure by the highest of the two brachial pressures. So for example, for our patient, he had a higher right arm pressure, and as such, his calculation would be as follows. So based on the current literature and the latest American Heart Association guidelines, the following are the accepted ranges for ABI interpretation. Values greater than 1.4 indicate incompressible vessels, which are more common in individuals with diabetes and chronic kidney disease. Individuals with an ABI greater than 1.4 have an increased risk of amputation and cardiovascular events, and uh, they should be further investigated with CT angio or duplex ultrasound. Values between 1.0 and 1.4 are considered normal. Values between 0.91 and 0.99 are classified as borderline. So these individuals do remain at risk of PAD and critical limb ischemia, and they're recommended by the American Heart Association to undergo ABI testing following exercise. Values less than 0.9 are diagnostic of PAD, so these individuals should be further investigated with CT angiography and duplex ultrasound. But remember, these are guidelines, and your ABI assessment should be used in conjunction with your clinical assessment. 